generosity. But I thank God for his word, and today we're just going to continue to hear what the Lord has to say. You know, as uh, I remind us time and time again, you come into here, and obviously I have a message. But I pray that you always hear uh, the voice within my voice, that God would speak to you. Isn't that your desire, for God to speak to you, your creator, your maker, your Lord, that he would speak to you? And so that's my desire this morning, is for God to be able to open up our ears, open up our hearts, and hear what thus saith the Lord. So this morning, I want you to turn to, stand and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I shared, if you wanted to call part one last week, but I want to go into the more detail uh, this week as, um, as the Holy Spirit would continue to lead me to be able to speak on the body of Christ and the power that should be operating in the body of Christ. And so, um, obviously, we thank God for his word. And as you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're going to be uh, looking at this uh, whole chapter. I'm not going to read the whole chapter this morning, but I want you to give you your assignment. Uh, your assignment is to read 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14 over and over and over. Read it over and over and over that you may have a revelation you know of what God is saying because when I'm preaching when I'm trying to teach um, there's just so much there but when you will take that time and just read these chapters then God will begin to speak to you uh, maybe in a different way but yet you will come to have understanding and so this morning if we will just focus on uh, verse let's see 12 Verses, let's just do 27. Are you there? If you're there, 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. Can I read it one more time? Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. Again, pray with me and pray for me that God would speak to us about the body of Christ, the body of Christ. Father, this morning, as we stand in your presence, God, we're just overwhelmed by your love and your grace. But God, I pray, Holy Spirit, you're the teacher. Teach us. Lord, you're the preacher. Preach, Lord. God, you know what needs to be said and done. And Lord, but it's revelation that comes from you. So that's our heart's desire to God today that you would just uh, save, heal, deliver, set free, empower, equip, do the work, God. Give understanding where they may not be understanding. Lord, I pray that lives will be broken. And Lord, I pray that truth will go forth. And God, that your purposes will be fulfilled today. And Lord, that you will be glorified in this church, in your body, in these bodies. Thank you, Lord. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen, you may be seated. I don't know if I'm going to be teaching or preaching this morning. Uh, we'll find out. But uh, as you look into uh, 1 Corinthians and we study about the body of Christ, here this passage of Scripture shared, as I shared last week, there's two truths. There's two truths. Number one, when you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you are born again, and you are washed in the blood of the Lamb. And your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You are now a part of the body of Christ. So Jesus came. He gave his body. Right? Amen. He gave his body. That we may be able to have life. Amen. To be able to have life more abundantly. So he gave his life. And so when we receive Christ as Lord and Savior, then we become the body, his body. He's at the right hand of the Father. The Bible says that he's the head and we are the body. Look at your neighbor and say, if you're born again, go ahead and tell your neighbor. If you're born again, you're the body of Christ. And so we find that... You and I are a part of the body of Christ individually, but yet the same truth is that we are a part of the body of Christ corporately. Corporately. Two truths. 
We as individuals, we're the body of Christ. And then we together is the body of Christ corporately. Got it? Yes. Got it. So we see that, you know, there is a transformation process that should begin in our lives when we come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. When we come to know the Lord Jesus Christ and we follow the pattern of the scriptures and they believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and they were his disciples, they was his followers, and then he told them to go and tarry and wait into Jerusalem until they would what? Be endued with power. And so on the day of Pentecost, the Bible talks about how the Holy Spirit came down and baptized them, every one. The Bible says the wind came and the cloven tongues like fire came down. And, and the Bible says all 120 that was in that upper room, they had been praying for several days, waiting for the promise of the Father, waiting for the Holy Spirit. And to be baptized with power. Because Jesus says that you will receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses. And so that happened. That took place. And the Bible says that they was filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak in other tongues. Everybody say other tongues. Other tongues. It's not the natural tongue, but a supernatural tongue. It's not what we would say naturally through the natural mind, but what they would speak through the spirit of the living God. So it is the normal pattern. No matter what denomination teaches otherwise, you know, that's the pattern throughout the book of Acts. And we've been studying the book of Acts. And if you'll study the book of Acts, if you'll read it yourself, you'll see that that's the pattern throughout the, the book of Acts, the beginning of the church. And so they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And so now their lives was totally transformed. And now it wasn't about them. It was about the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, let me tell you what. You know, you're not filled with any other spirit. You're filled with the Spirit of God. We believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So many times, oh, Holy Spirit, come. Well, you need to come to understand that the Holy Spirit dwells in you. I know we say these things many times, but the real truth in God's word is the Holy Spirit abides in us. Amen? You know, it's not like the Old Testament. The Bible talks about how the Spirit of God would come upon David or the Spirit of God would come upon Jonah or the Spirit of God would come upon Je um, Samson. Right? But yet... It's not like that. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon us, He abides with us. Yes. Jesus yes. said He won't be just with you, but He shall be in you. Yes. And He's talking about the Spirit of truth, right, man? Yes. So, so this is the pattern. This is the this is what the Bible teaches. Uh, maybe uh, not the doctrine of men, but the doctrine of the Bible. Can we say Amen? Yes. And so we find that Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. Everybody say new creation. new creation. A new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. So it's more than just saying a prayer. I said it's more than just saying a prayer. Well, I remember when I came to the altar and I said a prayer. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> Well, I repented. Good for you. But yet now, you, you listen, you, you give your life. You're a new creation. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit begins to make you a new creation in life. Can we say amen? amen. Now, the Bible says old. Everybody say old. Old has passed away because all things become new. So now, what is, what is he talking about? I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation in Christ. I think that King James says, I'm a new creature. Oh, Ernest T. Bass said that. I'm a new creature in Christ. You know, and so there should be a transformation of the heart. I said a transformation of the heart. And the Holy Spirit begins to transform your heart. Uh, you know, you have a heart of love for God and you have a love for others. I remember when I was born again and I walked out of that church. I really, truly, honestly didn't know how to love my wife until after I was born again. When I was born again, all of a sudden I knew how to love her. 
Before I admired her, she was the cutest thing you ever seen, and she chased me around everywhere until I finally submitted. But yet, true love came from when I was born again, did God begin to do a work, not only in me, but now I knew love. I knew love for God. That wasn't me, that was the work of the Holy Spirit. You think she didn't rejoice when I came to know Jesus? Amen, amen. Woo. But there should be a transformation from the old nature to the new nature. From the natural to the supernatural. We don't want to talk about that, but from the natural, from the carnal, right, to being spirit-led. There's that transformation that takes place, and it's still taking place. Can we say amen? And there should be a transformation of the mind. I said the transformation of the mind, of how you think. You know, people say, well, God's given you common sense. Well, praise God. Hopefully he gave some of you common sense. But yet, common sense is not the same thing as being led of the Spirit and having the mind of Christ. Because sometimes God asks you to do something that makes no sense at all <laughs> to the natural man. But we're to have the mind of Christ, that transformation. In other words, we're not thinking about the things of this world. The Bible says that we're in this world, but we're not of this world. Yes. You know, but we're so entrenched in the things of this world, aren't we? But God says, no, I want there to be a transformation, you know, that takes place. You know, as I said, Jesus is the head, you know, and, and, and he talked about us having the mind of Christ. And if he's the head and we have the mind of Christ, then here's the body. And the body begins to carry out the things that God has planned and purpose for us. Are you with me so far? You know, and so we see that that transformation continues. And there should be a transformation of the mouth. Yes. Yes. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Yes. I said there should be a transformation of the tongue yes. and the mouth. Because the book of James says no man can tame this, right? But who can tame it? God, the Holy Spirit. You know, so our words should change, right? And Jesus said this revelation, and I've shared it for years. You want to know what's in your heart? It's what's coming out of your mouth. So that transformation of the heart transforms the mouth. And I'm becoming the new creature, the new creation that God has intended me to be. What is he doing? He's preparing me for the purposes that he wants accomplished. See, now we find that that transformation is constantly taking place. Can we say amen? amen. You know, and so we find that uh, the, the words that we say and how we talk is transformed. What is on the inside comes through the words we speak. How many of you know your words have power? And what you used to say, you don't say anymore because there's a change. I'm not talking the way that I used to talk. I'm not, you know, uh, letting those words come out of my mouth. Amen. I'm not going to curse anymore. I'm going to bless in the name of the Lord. I'm not going to hate. I'm going to love. You know, there's a transformation of how you speak to one another, how I should speak to one another. But why? Because I'm being transformed. By the, by the Holy Spirit. Why? Because I'm I'm the body of Christ, right? This is his body. Are you with me? Are you soaking it in this morning? You know, and so we know, and we talked about last week how Jesus did that work, and, and he's the one who, who gave himself, and he met with his disciples, and he presented that bread, and he said, this is my body. And they took that bread from a full loaf, if you will. It wasn't a separate piece, but they took a piece of bread from that full loaf and said, this is my body. It is broken for you, right? Eat ye all. And then he took the wine and he says, listen, take, drink. This is my blood shed for you. Drink. For this is for the remission of sin. So his body was broken. His the blood was shed. And the Bible tells us in, 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 in Corinthians, Paul says, when we partake of his bread, when we take of communion, if you will, we're partaking, we're remembering the death, burial, and resurrection. We're remembering that we're a part of the body of Christ. Is that not right? Yes. You know, so, so we find that Jesus did this for us. And so it's by faith in his grace that we are now the body of Christ. And now God wants us to be able to uh, have this type of revelation 
that transformation. You know, we, we talk about information should lead to revelation and revelation should lead to transformation. Can we say amen? amen? I don't know about you, but see, listen, no matter what state you're in right now, God has something better for you. No matter where you're at right now, listen, whether you're miserable, you know, whether you're in the mully grubs, wherever you're going through difficulty, listen, God's got a presence and the power of the spirit that is able to help you wherever you are. And he wants to reveal himself to you, you know, in, a, in an incredible and a powerful way. So when we look at this letter in which Paul had written to the Corinthians, we look at this letter and Paul was the one who founded this church. Paul was the one, being the apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, founded this church. This church began to grow. And now Paul is writing a letter to this church, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, and so they, you know, there, there's even another letter that is not in our Bible. But yet this letter, number one, it's for correction. Everybody say correction. 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 How many of you like correction? It's for correction. So he's writing a letter to the church that he established for correction. And as we look through the scriptures, that's what I'm telling you. Read the book yourself and that you'll be able to see these things. There was division among the church members. Sexual immorality not addressed in the church. You know, there was misuse of spiritual gifts and speaking in tongues. And a lack of order in the church. And Paul said, God is not the author of confusion. So he's correcting thee. He is correcting them. And guess what? You know, sometimes I'm looking at this church and, and obviously uh, Paul established it, but Paul didn't stay there. And so as they begin to grow in their relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, some person might come over here and say, well, this is the way it's done. And that person, this is the way it's done. And you, sometimes when you listen to this person and that person, it'll bring confusion. How many of you know there's a lot of confusion out there even today? And let me tell you where the correction comes. The correction comes from the word of God. Yes. Not from a man, not from a yes. denomination. It co correction comes from the Bible. Yes. And the, if we, you know, uh, don't listen to God's word, then we don't have a foundation anymore. And so there came correction through this letter. And then after correction, he was given cor instruction. You know, when you're telling your child, don't do that, then you need to tell the child, this is the way to do it, right? So he's correcting them, and he'll say, no, that's not the way, and then he is given instruction. This letter is educational about the proper use of the Holy Spirit, the proper use of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and so the proper way to present your body. So it's educational. Everybody say educational. Educational. And so it gives revelation. So God is trying to give revelation. Jesus said, my words, they are spirit and they are life. And so he's trying to give revelation about the work of the Holy Spirit in their bodies. Okay. How many of you believe that we need revelation of what the Holy Spirit wants to do in your body and in the body of Christ? Can we say amen? Things that they've never learned. How many of you know we're all still learning? Yes. We might. How many of you went down some roads and hmm, that might not be the right road to go down? We've all been there. But God wants to give us revelation. You know, how many of you have truly can say I've been ignorant about some things? Yes. I've mean, been ignorant. Well, you know, it's not a bad thing. You know, I, you know, I've had to suffer through school. I was ignorant in a lot of things, but thank God that He had mercy and grace and helped me. To begin to have revelation of information, you know, and so, and then we find that this letter was a letter of exhortation. And so not only correction, not only instruction, not only revelation, but the exhortation that was to build them up. See, it's one thing to correct somebody and just walk away, but it's another thing to correct them and say, listen, you know, this is the way I want you to see this. And then, hey, you got this, right? And Paul was building them up and lifting them up. And this is a good pattern to for you parents, for your children. Can we say amen? amen. You know, and also uh, in different areas of life. So anyway, we're not going there this morning. But yet, number one, we find that uh, uh, the body was not to be divided. 
And so as we look in 1 Corinthians 3, if you want to turn there, read along with me. I'm going to move quickly through these passages of Scripture. First of all, the body, Paul says the body is not divided. So he's correcting them because of this division. And he says that, you know, and um, 1 through 7, he says, 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 7, he says, And I, brethren, could not speak to you as spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. He said that I feed you with milk and not solid food. For, for, for now you, you were not able to receive it. And now, and even now you are not able. For you are still carnal. Listen to what he says. For where there is envy, strife, and division among you, are you not carnal? And behaving like mere men. God doesn't want us to act like mere men. <laughs> And so, for when one says that I'm a Paul, and another says that I'm of Apollos, then are you not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? But ministers through whom you believe, as the Lord gave to each one. I planted, Paul says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then, neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. So he's addressing the division. Well, I'm of this group, and I'm there. And look at the division that's in the church today. Yes. Well, I'm a Baptist. Well, I'm a Methodist. Well, I'm a Pentecostal. Well, I'm a Presbyterian. Well, you know, I'm a, a Baptistical. You know, you know, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm this and I'm that. Well, I don't believe in denominations. And you go on and on and on and on and on the division. But let me tell you what. You know, here is uh, some of the things that I've shared. Uh, I, I want to share. Uh, we have to be cautious not to get caught up in following men Amen. and not the Lord. Amen. You know, when I was addressing, there's many false prophets that Jesus said would come in the last days. We can't afford to get caught up in men and their ministries. Right. It's good to learn from them. I learn. I listen. Listen. I listen to sermons. I, you know, I kind of trust more ministers than others. But you know what? I listen. It's kind of like eating fish. I eat the meat and spit out the bones. You know, and I listen to a lot of ministry. But you got to be careful not to get caught up, because you'll get unbalanced and you'll get unhealthy. And you know, so I've learned that over my life. And so you know, the devil. You know, the devil loves division. And sometimes when you get so spiritual, you know, your nose gets so far up in the air that you think you're above everybody else. And listen, that's where spiritual pride comes and you can't even see it. Yeah. And you yes. think that you're way up here and though everybody else is down there. The devil doesn't play fair. Yeah. He divides. He, he likes to divide. He attempts to divide. Yeah. Listen, he, he attempts to divide relationships. Yeah. He tries to divide husband and wife. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He divides, he tries to divide families. Yeah. Is that not right? Yeah. You know, he loves division. Yeah. He attempts to divide our walk with the Lord. Yeah. He attempts to divide the church, yeah. divide members from members. He, he attempts, and, and, and it looks like in America, he's dividing us racially, socially, and politically. Yeah. Yeah. And Paul is saying, listen, the body of Christ is not divided. That's right. That's right. We're not divided. But there's only one Christ, amen? amen? There's only one cross that he died for. There's blood and the body that he gave. Can we say amen? amen? Can we say that there's only one Holy Spirit too? Can we say amen? amen. And so we find that, that, you know, Paul is addressing the, the division and, oh, we have to be so cautious. You know, the Bible tells us that we need to love one another and forgive one another. Can we say Amen. amen. You know, when Satan succeeds, unity and love and forgiveness has been overcome by the enemy. And then it gives way to hatred and strife and contention. And then relationships are destroyed. How many of you know that's why the Bible tells us that we need to take every thought captive? Amen. Amen. And not allow division to happen in our lives. How many of you know when you pray and you ask God to forgive you? And how many of you know we need to pray and ask God to forgive that other person too? Because that's what Jesus is all about. That's his body. That's his principles and precepts. 
And so we have to be able to say, yes, you know, I'm the body of Christ. Everybody say, I'm the body of Christ. Body of Christ. You know, I love. I love. I, love. I, forgive. I forgive. I bless and curse not. Bless and curse. You know, this is what God tells us that we need to be and do. Can we say amen? amen. And so we find that, you know, some people say, well, is the dominations of the devil? Well, what? no, not if we're following the, the Lord. Can we say amen? amen? Not if we're following the word. Not if we're getting in there. And not If we ever set our denomination above the word of God, then we're in trouble. Yeah. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people who have went to the same school and they're preaching and teaching the same stuff. And whatever their denomination teaches and preaches, well, that's exactly, you know, it seems to be the rule of law. That is not of God. You know, if the denomination is preaching the word of God and teaching the word of God, I'm talking about the full gospel. I'm talking about the full gospel, not just taking this over here and leaving this alone. So anyway. God doesn't want to have division, and God doesn't have division in the body of Christ. And the Bible says that he don't want any schisms, if you will. And it shouldn't be an author of confusion, and so God wants us not to be confused. Amen? Yeah. And so, hallelujah. And then we find, you know, as we look in 1 Corinthians 6.15, that our body, the body is a temple. Your body is now a temple. And hear what Paul says. In 1 Corinthians 6, if you want to turn over there and follow with me. 6.15. Do you not know that your body are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? As he is addressing the sexual immorality and the things that is happening in the church. Um, just a side note, obviously they had temples of prostitution where the men could go at any time. Of course, the men and women. You know, a very ungodly city, the Corinth church, uh, not the Corinthian church, but yet Corinth the city was. And so obviously he's addressing it. And he says uh, this, or do you not know that he who joins to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. Now that is scary. Um, but he who is joined to the Lord is in one spirit with him. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that makes a man, every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Whom is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not of your own. For you were bought with the price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So again, he is addressing the sin that was in the Corinthian church. And so obviously that letter is to every believer. Amen. That your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. See, that's what God desired from the very beginning. He said that I never desired to dwell in a building or, 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 or in a tabernacle or in a house. No, my desire was to dwell in you. And so when he comes, and the Bible says now when he comes, your body is the temple of God. And so Paul is saying, don't attach yourself to ungodly things things because it's going to destroy your relationship with him and the bible says that listen back in the old testament is talking about when you defile the temple god will destroy and so there is consequences to sin i said there is consequences to sin and when we don't yield our members properly then there's ramification and so paul is given correction he's given warning but he's given instruction and he's given revelation. You know, had those people ever thought, oh my gosh, my body is the temple of Christ or the temple of the Holy Spirit? And then he goes on and he gives more revelation. Listen, Jesus purchased you. When you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, you're no longer your own. He says, pick up your cross and follow me, Jesus said. Lay down your life. Now your body belongs to me. And so we can't have it our way. We got to have it God's way. Are you with me this morning? Amen. Hey, it's going to get better. You know, and so we find that uh, we need to refrain from sin. What we watch, what we listen to, who we connect with. 
so we don't allow sin to destroy our relationship with God. How many of you know when you're trying to operate and do what God wants you to do and you've got sin there, then he's going to make you deal with that sin because he's got a purpose for you in your life. Can we say amen? amen. And what does the Bible tell us? If we will confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin. And what? Cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And so I'm so glad that God has made provision for the forgiveness of sin. That he, not only when we repent, that he restores. Can we say amen? amen? And so we find that the very presence of God abides in us. And that should be, you know, twofold thing. Oh, the fear of the Lord, but yet the blessing of God. Depends on how you look at it. But I see it as the blessing of the Lord that God lives inside of me. And so we find next, as we move on, the body of Christ is many members. The body of Christ is many members, as we read in 1 Corinthians 12. For as the body is one and has many members, but all of the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit, everybody say one spirit, one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, whether Jew or Greeks. Whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it not therefore of the body? And if the ear should say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, it is therefore not of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? I'm going to stop right there. So we find that we're looking at corporately now. You're, he's using the analogy of our bodies. How many of you thank God for your body parts? Yeah. Hello. Yeah. And he's using that example. In other words, he's teaching, he's training, he's given revelation. Like the body of Christ, look at your body. And see, we, he says, look at your hand, look at your foot. Doesn't, doesn't it look a little different? How about your ear and your nose? Everything looks different. Look at your name and say, you look a little different. <laughs> and God created us like that. We're of the one Holy Spirit, but God has created us differently. And so Paul was saying, listen, every body part is important. Agree? How many of you would say every body part is important? Amen. Well, I love my hand, but yet my hand loves my arm. And my arm loves my shoulder. Because if they didn't work together, well, I'd be in trouble, right? And likewise, my ears and my eyes and my nose loves my head. Because without the head... They've just been floating out there somewhere. <laughs> Silly examples, but yet the body of Christ is many members. And so every body part has a purpose, yeah. right? Every body part has a purpose, the body of Christ. And he's looking at this corporately. So you and I, we're a part of the body, but yet different. How many of you believe that different body parts have different functions? Right? Well, I know people who can walk on their hands, but that's not normal. Most time, you know, our hands is for grabbing, giving, serving, whatever, right? You know, opening the door for our wives. Amen? Isn't that sweet? I'm brownie points. Come on now. Um, our feet, you know, obviously are made for walking, stomping, you know, what, whatever. But we see that they have different function and the ears and so on and so forth. And so Paul is saying, listen, every body part has a different function. So it's your <laughs> responsibility to find out, okay, what am I? <laughs> you know, some of us say, well, I'm a mouth. <coughs> well, I'm an ear. <coughs> well, you know, seriously, you need to find out. Lord, give me revelation. I'm a part of the body. So what, what is my purpose? What is my function within the body? And so every body part looks a little different, but important. 
but we all are of the same body. There's unity. There should be unity and diversity. Can we say that? There should be unity and diversity in the body of Christ. And so that's what God's all about. When we see God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they're perfect unity. Are, are you with me this morning? And so that's how his body should operate. And so we find that, you know, those who say, and I said this last week, those who say, well, I can serve Christ, but I don't have to go to church. Wrong theology. You need to be a part of the body. Yes, amen. You're never going to be able to fit in. You're never going to be able to. You need the one another, as I said last week. Amen. We need one another. Amen. Listen, you got to see this revelation. I can't fulfill the purpose that God has in my life by myself. We operate together. Can we say amen? amen. We operate together. You know, I can't play those drums. I've tried and tried and tried. But I'm so glad that somebody can. I can't sing as well as some of these, but I try, try, try. What about the guitar players? And, you know, we use the praise team as an example. Amen? You know, and there's so many people that have different gifts to be able to do different things. And so God is saying, listen, you may be different, but yet that's your calling. That's your purpose. And I'm not saying just to play drums or the guitar or sing. No, there's more to it, but it's just an example. Can we say amen? And so we can't compare ourselves. It's, 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 it's futile to compare yourself to other people. How many of you know when you compare yourself to other people, you're going to get depressed? Yes, yes. You know, when I compare myself to Jason Franklin, I get depressed. <laughs> when I compare myself to T.D. Jakes, I get depressed. That man's a preaching machine. You know, I am who I am, and I want to be the best that I can be, but, you know, they are who they are, and I am who I am, and you are who you are. Can we yeah. say amen? Yeah. And we can't compare ourselves. Because God's got a purpose and a function. And then we find that the body is gifted by the same Holy Spirit. Yeah. Your body, the body of Christ, is gifted. Everybody say, I'm gifted. I'm gifted. You're gifted. The body of Christ is gifted. And so we see that. In 1 Corinthians 14, 1, uh, you know, Paul says, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you prophesy. All right. So your desires should not be for the things of this world, but your desires and my desires for be the things of God's world. So I want to receive, everybody say receive, receive, receive the spiritual gift that God has for me yes. in my life. Desire spiritual gifts that you may prophesy. Now listen, this word, I won't go spend a lot of time here, but uh, you know, prophesying and prophecy is two different things. Yes. Prophecy is many times you're foretelling the future when you're given prophecy but when you're prophesying you're pouring forth words into the lord a prime example is ashlyn a while ago when she was up here and she began to just pour out words through the holy spirit and what she was doing she was prophesying she is speaking edification she was lifting up the lord she might not even know that but yet now you know ashlyn but yet when you begin to open up your mouth, why? Because you're filled with the Holy Spirit, yes, amen? Yes. And you begin to open up your mouth and you begin to prophesy. Yes. And the Lord is lifted up and the Lord is magnified and yes. the Lord is glorified. Yes. And the whole body is yes. magnified and glorified and lifted up because we need that, amen? Yes. But God gives different gifts for different people. Yes. And we need one another. Look at your neighbor and say, I need you. I need you. And you need me. But is it? So 1 Corinthians 12, 4 says there are diversities of gift, but the same spirit. Yes. Listen, there is diversity of gifts, but the same spirit. There is difference of ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, but the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to one for the profit of all. For uh, to one is given the word of wisdom yes. through the spirit. How'd that come? Through the Spirit. The Word of God comes through, the Word of Wisdom comes through the Holy Spirit. Why we want people to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Because God begins to change and transform your mouth. Yes. 
and your tongue. Yes. And now the Holy Spirit begins to speak through you yes. to somebody else. It's not this, oh, look at me. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's for the edification of another. So, you know, it's the Holy Spirit. The manifestation of the Spirit is given for one, the prophet of all. Uh, for to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, a word of knowledge through the same Spirit. How many of you need a word of wisdom? Yes. Hello? Yes. I'm a man. I need words of women. I need words of women to know how women think. Give me wisdom. Marilyn knows how to help me. I, I, I need no words of knowledge. How many of you believe we need words of knowledge through the Holy Spirit that is going to operate through you? Not just one person, but corporately. Are you with me today? To another, you know, knowledge through the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. Faith to impart faith in you. How many of you know God wants to help us build up our most holy faith? And when we testify and when we share what God is doing, how many of you know the word, you know, it, it brings edification, but yet faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How many of you are lifted up and you're built up in faith through what God speaks through another person? Can we say amen? But it's the Holy Spirit. It's the gifts and the operation of the Holy Spirit through the body. This is how it's supposed to operate. And Paul has given them in instruction. And so to another, the gift of healings yes. by the same spirit that you are able to heal, not only physically, but emotionally yes. by your words. How many of you know somebody, some people are hurt emotionally yes, and you are able to bring words of healing yes. Yes, because you're speaking through the power of the Holy Spirit, not the natural mind, not the carnal mind, but through the power of the Holy Spirit. What does it mean to be filled with the Holy Spirit? To be able to see the revelation, the instruction that God is saying, the working of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and, and then he says, to another, the workings of miracles. See, that's what we always want. We want a miracle, really. Oh, you got to be honest. We want miracles. And I'm so glad that they come. And they do. And they work through the Holy Spirit, through different people. And I don't have time because I got so much information and I got to shut it down. But there's so much information I don't have time to share with you all of the miracles that I've experienced and probably what you have experienced. I see a miracle over here. You know, I see a miracle over there. You know, I see miracles everywhere. But yet it's the Holy Spirit gifting the body, gifting us. And see, Paul is saying, listen, here's the written purpose of the Holy Spirit. To be able to understand the unity, but the diversity and the gifting that comes when you desire spiritual gifts. And so here's the problem. We're so caught up in carnality. You know, can would Paul come today? Could he speak to us as mature or would he be speaking to the new worship through a uh, center like as babes? And so it's up to you to grow. Can we say amen? Amen. Spending time. And then the Bible says to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits. Oh, my gosh. Don't we need that this day and time? Yes. Yes. I've been operating a lot in that lately. <laughs> you need to have discernment what spirit you are of <laughs> and what spirit they are of. Yes. The Bible says try the spirit as if they be of God. Because the devil is an imitator. I'm telling you, he's able to imitate a lot. You need to have that type of discernment. And it comes through the Holy Spirit to another different kinds of tongues, to another, you know, the interpretation of tongues. And but but also tongues, interpretations, there's a gift of tongues, interpretation. But yet Paul was saying that I would rather for you prophesy than to speak in a tongue in a church. And I don't have time. That's, that's maybe for next week. But yet to prophesy, but they are, there's such thing. Listen, there's such thing as public tongues. Everybody say public yes, tongues. Public tongues. public tongues and private tongues. Private tongues. Yes. Say it again. Public, public tongues, tongues and private tongues. 
Everybody doesn't have the gift of public tongues and interpretation. That's what Paul says. Many denominations take that and says, well, the Bible says, does all speak in tongues? He's talking about the gifts of tongues and interpretation of tongues. Amen. But Paul says, forbid not to speak in other tongues, for I speak in tongues more than y'all. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Isn't that what he, said? what he said? We're so convenient to skip over those scriptures. Yes. We're not to be afraid of tongues. When they were baptized in the Holy Spirit, they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Right. But there's a proper order for all things. And yes. so that gets into a whole different message that needs to be spoke in the church today. Amen. But yet the Bible talks about when you speak in an unknown tongue, you are edifying yourself. Look at what Paul says in um, 2 Corinthians real fast. Oh, excuse me. 1 Corinthians 14. He says that he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. How bad in the spirit he speaks what? Mysteries. Mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation, and the comfort of men. So he's talking about private tongues and public tongues. And you've got to have understanding of the scripture. Who gives understanding? The Holy Spirit. That's right. To be able to have understanding. It says, listen, he who speaks in the tongue edifies himself. But he who prophesies edifies the church. So what he's talking about here is that when you begin, you're filled with the Holy Spirit. And your prayer language changes. And you begin to pray with your understanding. And then you begin to pray in the spirit. And here's where so many people fall short. Because when you spend time with the Lord and you allow the Holy Spirit to begin to pray through you. You know, Paul says, listen, in the church, I want to speak understandable words. Are you with me? That's what he said. Because so if I'm speaking in tongues, you don't know what I'm saying. He says, listen, there shouldn't be confusion. But when I'm speaking, you know, to you, I need to speak to you in a language that you understand. But when he says that I'm speaking in tongues more than you all, he's talking about his personal prayer time. That's right. He's talking about his personal prayer time where he's praying and allowing the Holy Spirit to pray through him. Because why? Because it's edifying him. Yes, yes. Edify. Everybody shout edify. edify. The Holy Spirit knows how to edify his body. What does that mean? To build up, to encourage, to empower. You know, how is these gifts going to operate if you are not spending time, you know, in the Lord, in the Spirit, praying in the Spirit, yes. what, and, and allowing the Holy Spirit to do a work in you? You have not because you ask not. The Bible says there's death and life in the power of the tongue, Amen. and your words can be so powerful that will Amen. change lives. Can we put our hands together and say amen? amen? So what God was saying, listen, not only am I changing you, and not only am I giving, gifted you, but I'm giving you a gift of speech, but you have to spend time in me. So when you pray, and you allow the Holy Spirit to pray in you and through you to edify you. Then you can speak understandable words to somebody else. Then you can give a word of wisdom and you can give a word of knowledge. And you can do this and you can do that because it's because of the working of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Well, priest, King, you better come. <laughs> lots, lots, lots. I'm trying to get a notion through a thimble. It's it's difficult. But we find that the Bible says these words. <clears throat> Let me find my place here. In 1 Corinthians 4, 12, 4, it says, There are diversity of gifts but the same spirit. There are difference of ministries but the same Lord. And there is diversity of activities but the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is, uh, you know, to one, the prophet of all. And then if you drop down to verse 28, it says, Now you are the body of Christ. Everybody say, I'm the body of Christ. The body of Christ. And members individually. And God has appointed these to the church, apostles, prophets, teachers. After that, miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, administrations, various of tongues are all prophets. Apostles, excuse me, 
Are, are, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracle? Do they all uh, have gifts of healing? Uh, do all speak in tongues, public tongues and interpretation tongues is what I just went over. Uh, do all interpret, but earnestly desire the best gift. Yet, I show you a more excellent way, and that goes right into the love chapter. The love chapter. And so, I'm telling you this morning that your body should be a power plant. Amen. I said your body should yes. be a power plant. I said your body should be a power plant. Amen. Can we say amen? amen? You know, as we are spending time in the presence and the power of the Lord, that he has empowered you, he's strengthened you. Listen, God gets bigger, your problems get smaller. Yes. See, you're going to have issues and problems and difficulties. We all do. But when you spend time with the Lord, he begins to flow through you. He begins to minister to you. You've got questions many times. Why, why, why? Well, God's got the answer. Amen. And you spend time with him and let God wants to empower you. Listen, God calls and God equips. And so it's up to us to be able to say, oh, God, here I am. Amen. Amen. Here I am, Lord. How many of you really desire <laughs> to allow God to use you in a greater way? Yes. See, it starts right there. Yes. It starts right there. As I heard this morning, those who hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. What? God is the one who's a rewarder of those who what? Diligently seek him. I don't know about you, but I want to be all that I can be. And I need the Lord every day. Can we say amen? Can we all stand this morning? You know, and that's what God wants. You know, I'd like to revisit this, but our words are powerful. How many of you believe that when Peter, in Acts chapter 3, he walked up to that lame man? And he said this, Cindy, he said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I possess, I give unto thee. Rise up and walk in the name of Jesus. Was that not a power plant right there? Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says that he grabbed and lifted him up and the guy started jumping and leaping and shouting. But I want you to know what he said. Silver and gold. I'm not here to give you monetary stuff. I'm here to give you something more. I tell people all the time, we go to Ecuador. Well, we need to feed these people. We need to give them medical supplies. I say, listen, they're going to get sick again. They're going to get hungry again. But we need to give them something that is going to last for all eternity. Can we say amen? They need Jesus. And I want you to understand that. See, the devil don't want you to understand this. Because you are a power plant. If you will allow God to flow through you. Whatever way. And we look through the scriptures and where they went, God manifested his presence. Can we say amen? So where do you go? Look, look, when you grab a hold of somebody, it's the body of Christ. Are you with me? When you speak, it should be the words of the Lord. Can we say amen? Joe, you're getting too far out there. Listen, just believe God's word. I said, just believe God's word. And so that's what God has put on my heart is that he wants to transform, continue to transform from the natural to the supernatural. Can we say amen?